Welcome everyone to the largest anti-money laundering events happening today, celebrating December 9, which is the anti-corruption day. We are very glad here to have with us more than 500 anti-fraud fighters, anti-money laundering specialists, and anti-corruption uh, heroes who are actually coming all together to share their knowledge and understand what is the future of anti-money laundering compliance. This is one of the largest events happening in the Middle East to celebrate this important day. And someone will ask me, what is the relationship between corruption and between money laundering? We always say that when someone is doing corruption in the financial industry, what he's going to do with the money? He can't hide it. Definitely, he is going to use this money inside the financial system. And it's our responsibility as professional working in the financial domain to ensure that you know, this corrupted money is not going to enter our financial system. We are the first line of defense to ensure that we stop corrupted individuals from using their money legally in our markets. And today, we have amazing topic for you and amazing speakers. And we would like first, before we start, to thank our sponsors for making this possible. It was always because of their effort and their initiative, we were able to bring to you amazing topics and speakers like this. And we have attendees from all over the world. So I would like to thank Zen Dimension, which is they are the uh, uh, actual uh, uh, service provider for um, uh, Minipil uh, Technology Limited, which is they, they are having amazing solution. They are going to be speaking with you today about called cross fraud. Why it's cross-fraud? Because we need to find fraud across all the channels, cr across the process of uh, uh, onboarding your customers, monitoring your customers, following up, doing your proper due diligence related to your employees, understanding exactly your customers, your vendors, your third party, all this need to be checked. And you need to make sure that there is no fraud, there is no anti-money laundering happening. And also, I would like to thank our partners, uh, the Association of Certified Fraud Examiners, that uh, uh, chapters that partner with us, starting with uh, here in UAE, Al Nazaha Association, and in Saudi Arabia, Saudi uh, Anti Fraud uh, Association, Safa, and in Lebanon, ACFE Lebanon, and uh, uh, IIA Jordan. They were really contributing in making sure that their members they get the highest level of education and, and learning. And with that, before we start our session, I would like to give the stage to Dr. Ez, and he is from Zen Dimension, and he is going to welcome all of you in this webinar. Dr. Ez, the stage is for you. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Yad, and I welcome everyone. I wish you a very and pleasant, uh, nice evening. Um, in fact, yes, we are very happy to sponsor such events, uh, which is related to the um, spectrum of um, governance, risk, and compliance in all aspects. And we, as uh, a sponsor uh, for this event, uh, the dimension uh, with the cooperation of Manipal uh, Technology Limited, who are also a leader um, in uh, providing such wonderful uh, solution. Uh, the dimension since 2010, uh, we know that all the organization, they are taking care in uh, three aspects, in fact. The first uh, aspect, which come in the X um, axis, uh, it is related to the ERP and the core banking uh, systems and all the transaction system as such, while the y-axis, they are taking care of the customer relationship and maybe vendor relationship. And the uh, z-axis uh, or z-dimension, which is related to the GRC. Unfortunately, uh, in the last two decades, most of the companies, they are manage the GRC activities using the conventional office tools like Excel or Word or any other templates, which cannot be integrated and not related to the data. That means it's not uh, data 
driven so it will build a confidence for the professional whether whether they are um, governance risk compliance or even auditors so uh, here we came with uh, the idea of fulfilling the uh, third dimension or z dimension and from which we derive the brand of our company uh, z dimension in order to take care and support all the uh, professionals with the certification training and solution and consultation that are related in general for the uh, GRC and audit. This uh, event uh, tonight, we will focus on one aspect of the uh, generic GRC concept, which is the anti-money laundering. That is, as the title of this uh, uh, webinar, the future of anti-money uh, money laundering laundering compliance and we will um, start with the thanks for the chapter of the association of the certified fraud examiners uh, and uh, all other uh, partners for this webinar in order to give you an overall and principles about the um, how to fight with the uh, money uh, laundering using an intelligent picture and uh, data-driven uh, solution. Uh, then uh, we will give uh, a case study through the systems and uh, how we can model um, such a solution for your benefits. And as I can see, this, uh, those who have um, uh, are willing to attend the complete uh, webinar they will uh, gain two uh, CDEs in order to be added to your um, professional portfolio. Thank you very much. And I wish uh, you get benefits and uh, useful information, knowledge, and skills during this webinar. And thank you very much. Welcome to the future of fraud. Welcome to the future of corruption, of anti-money laundering. It's all about me. You know me? Maybe you don't know me. Maybe you don't remember me. But in the old days, I was actually operating in the street. And let me wear my hat so maybe you remember me. I was actually working in the mafia. And in the mafia, the business was booming. I was in the street actually getting all this illegal money. And we entered it into the financial system with no issue. I go to the bank with my gun. And if he say he will not accept my deposit, I will kill him. So I was in a full control. We were operating all over the world. If you remember in New York, we had five families of mafia and we controlled the street until the government went after us. When the government went after my friends of the mafia and for my group, and we can do any illegal activities and we can control the financial market, we went underground. We're still doing all this illegal activity of trafficking and drugs and killing and crimes. But now we have a serious issue. We can't use the money in the financial sector. Every time we are trying to go to the bank and deposit the money, the bank will ask us a very simple question. Where you got the money from? And wherever excuses we try to find, we can't actually get the money in. But we decided to trick the bank. We decided not to wear this dress that we are wearing. We decided maybe we need to do some changes. And some changes, sometimes they are good. They say, when you are going to change how you dress, how you interact, the, the, the individuals will not know the source of your income, will not know it's coming from your illegal activity. So what we decided to do, we decided to change our business and change our hat as well. We said, what about opening a laundry shop? and wearing a hat where I am a businessman and I have a laundry shop. And from this laundry shop that I'm generating all this cash and I'm gonna enter this cash into the business. And this cash that's gonna enter into the business is gonna be clean. Why? Because it's coming from an actual front business where I'm laundering all this money. How much money I was able to launder using this technique? Let me tell you, I was able to launder more than $2 trillion annually. 
Mm. But they uncovered that just a couple of months ago when in Vincent they had a leak and they discovered that all these financial institutions, they laundered all my money and no one asked questions. Let me tell you, they asked questions, but we bribed them. They asked questions, but we created fake documents for them. And we were able to manipulate all that and get all the money, which is what was great at that time. And we were able to do this over and over. And the amount of money that we have taken is actually representing 2 to 3% of the actual world GDP anyway, which is unbelievable amount. So you can see the impact that we have inside the organizations when we are doing all this kind of anti-money laundering. And the amount of fraud that's happening is massive because of a very simple concept. It's transparency. We are not transparent. We are not going to report the source of income. We are not going to show our actual records. We are going to always try to use a very simple concept that all the criminals they use for them to be able to enter their money into the financial system. And what is that concept? It's called disguise. I'm going to use a fake face, a fake account, a fake offshore company, a fake name to be able to enter this financial system. As long as I'm providing the proper records, as long as they see that, OK, this is the structure of the organization and that, you know how the money is coming from that trust or moving from this account, you following the proper legal method. No one is going to ask me questions. Everyone is going to say, yes, this is the proper way of doing it. So I am using the same techniques that animals they use in the forest to survive. I am hiding in plain sight. I am there. You can see me, but you can't spot me. And what you need to do as anti-money laundering professionals, you need to be able not only to look for this unusual transaction, you need to uncover them. You need to find them. But unfortunately, because of the massive amount that me and my friends in the organized crime world we are doing, you don't have the time and the money for you to establish the proper anti-money laundering compliance to catch all our transactions. So do you catch some? Yes. Based on 2020 report, they said you were able to catch anti-money laundering professionals only 1% of the money that we laundered. <laughs> Only 1%. So we kept the 99%. So even if you catch this 20 billion, this uh, 100 billion, I am still keeping out of this 2 trillion massive amount of money. And this is the actual challenge. Because I know exactly how to launder the money in the proper way. And I target all your weaknesses in the control. You are trying to focus on placement and making sure I'm not going to enter the money into the system. Don't worry. I have my approaches and we are, I'm going to show you. You are trying to make sure I will not move the money from one account to one account, one organization to one organization. And I have the proper control. And even with taking the money out of the system, I am so creative in implementing so many uh, techniques that your staff, they are not going to uncover. And why this is happening? Because your bank, your financial institution is allowing this to happen. They say the banks, of course, they say the main reason why corruption is striving and corruption is happening and we corrupted individuals are living in heaven because banks, they are allowing us to do this. Banks, they are not asking questions. Or there are some corrupted individuals inside your banks. We can bribe them like what happened here where one guy from my friends from Pakistan, he was taking bribes and he bribed his friend inside the bank and he, he was able to launder more than 34 million hmm, very interesting so when we are speaking about banks they say the issue is with the banks if banks they don't have the proper controls they don't have the proper monitoring if banks like what happened in hsbc in the old days they are just creating a compliance officer who will do stop move on stop move on or approve all the transaction he's just operating as a cover to show in front of the regulators that everything is done properly, disaster can happen. And this is actually what happened. This is why this guy was able to bring his bribe to the bank and no one asked any questions. And then we discovered FIFA scandal happened. So when we want to understand exactly how we control your banks, we need to focus on the risk. How can you, as anti-money laundering professional, as an individual working in compliance department, in a fraud department, internal audit, inside any of these financial institutions, identify the risk. 
how can you say this is a, a, a very important and follow the risk-based approach when you are doing anti-money laundering. Before I tell you, let me tell you a story. One day I was climbing with my friend on a, a mountain and the tiger attacked us. So what I did, I opened my bag and I tried to look for my tennis shoes. My friend, he said, are you stupid? You think you can be faster than the tiger? I said, no, 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 no. At least faster than you. <laughs> And this is what will happen. Your financial institution should look at these risks and issues, not because you are going to be faster than the fraudsters and the criminal and the regulators, but you need to be faster than your other banks and other financial institutions. So when something will happen, it is not going to impact you immediately. It's going to delay the impact on you because you have the proper procedures in place. And it's all about your ability to understand the level of risk of the client we are dealing with the level of risk in the correspondent account we are opening and the organization that we are dealing with. How can we identify this? Today, we are living in the digital age. It's not anymore we are going to go and say, customer, tell me about yourself. We would like to know our customer. No, it's about using this big data, capitalizing on this big data that's currently available for us to verify the identity of the customer, for us to verify the address of the organization we are dealing with. I love it when someone will say, for, for me to know your address, I need your electricity bill. Easy, I can create fake one. <laughs> or like what they do in India, for us to know your office, take a photo in, in front of your office and send it to us. Wow, really? This is how you verify my office? So how can we know who we are dealing with? They say today using the big data, this is the actual oil in the economy we are living in. Today, we can utilize LinkedIn, Facebook, Google, all these um, amazing database for us to verify. You say, how can I do it? Let me tell you. Today, banks, when they are giving loans, they are checking someone on LinkedIn to see if he is connected and his friends are very wealthy, they will approve his loan because they say most likely he is going to pay back. But if he's looking for a job and his friends, they just graduated from college, they say, oh, we are not sure if this is going to have a bright future. Focusing on the big data, which is today accounting for more than 30 billion, trying to connect your internal system with the collective power of the cyber world, with the collective power of your other financial institutions. They say today we are working in a global economy, the meaning sharing of information and obtaining information from outsiders. This is the issue. Why? Because we don't want to assume. We want to know. We want to collect all the information up to date. Today, fraudsters, they are living in a modern economy. So their techniques and their types of fraud are changing. So we need to be up to the mark. The meaning, if we collect information from other financial institutions about the recent anti-money laundering techniques, and we figure out the money laundering schemes that these guys are doing, we are prepared to fight them. So collecting the data is not enough. We need to convert these data into information and then into knowledge. And finally, we need to make the proper decisions. Not only to stop fraud from happening and to make sure anti-money laundering is actually implemented uh, up to date, but to ensure that we predict the future. What's going to happen in the future? What is the next technique that these individuals are going to do? They say FBI changed their name. In the old days, FBI, they called them Federal Bureau of Investigation. Today, no, 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 this is not the name. Today, they call them Federal Bureau of Intelligence. They want to catch an individual before doing an explosion. And this is what we need to do the same. Don't waste your time as anti-money laundering compliance and investigation team and internal audit in saying we need to look at these cases that we have. Why don't you go and have the proper system in place to give you an indicator that something is about to happen so you stop before it happening. Looking at customer and before he will launder his money, you identify that this transaction is not acceptable, so you block it. We need to make sure that we prevent our system rather than wasting our time in investigating. And not only that, paying fives, fines to the regulators billion of dollars of fines we have to pay to the regulators. So we need to have a system where it will identify red flags. And all of us in uh, uh, anti-money laundering world, we are aware of all these types of red flags. We learn if someone is doing this, if someone is sending money from offshore, if someone is sending large amount, all these are red flags. But unfortunately, it's only about us. Until today, we are not using a system. 
You say, no, yeah, we are using a system. No, you are using a system based on rule-based. Rule-based system is not effective. You need to have a dynamic system. You need to have a system that's doing 24 hours monitoring because once we catch these red flags, we are going to catch anti-money laundering. We are going to catch corruption. And this is what we need to do. So it's all about our ability to assess the risk and figure out exactly where is this risk going to happen. But it's not only about that, because when you catch any issues related to money laundering, the major issue to say this is a crime or this is a mistake is a very simple word called knowledge. How can we know that this employee inside your bank or financial institution, he is not aware, he's stupid, he approved that transaction, or he was aware and he received money, or he decided to what we say, he's doing willful blindness. He is trying not to be aware. And unfortunately, most of the banks that involve in animal laundering, they decided not to ask the question. They can ask the question. But they decided to just ignore, to be blind and say, what we don't want to see, we don't want to hear, just give us the money. And when they are paying the, uh, the fine, they are not sad. Why banks are not sad, unfortunately? Because they say, how much money we made out of the client? Seven billion. Okay, how much fine we paid? Two billion. Not bad. Good idea. And unfortunately, these are the issues that happen. And this is if regulators, they were able to cash them. So the issue when we are dealing with money laundering is a massive issue. This is why you know, globally we are fighting against it because it's related to our economy, related to our uh, 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 world. If we allow these criminals to launder their money, they can control our world. And we come back to the world of mafia and control. <laughs> and this is what you need to make sure it will not happen. You need to make sure that you are in control as a fraud examiner fighting these cases not the mafia is taking control over your operation. So how can we make sure that you are in control? They say they created so many standards for anti-money laundering professionals for them to understand, to be able to go after these criminals and uncover their scheme. So how money laundering can happen? They say money laundering can happen through different kinds of techniques that these individuals, they implement. But again, we are speaking about these traditional techniques. These are 20 years ago where someone is going to do wire transfer. Don't worry, we have all the controls in place. Or someone is going to open correspondent account and try to launder the money through it. Or someone is going to have a, a, a payable through account and he will have direct access and move the money. Or someone is going to be doing concentration account and try to hide the transaction they are doing. Or they are operating in a private banking. We are dealing with politically exposed person or high wealth individuals or they are making the payment in a structured way or smurfing by sending small payment to the bank where no one can cash them, or they are involved in any other kind of structuring or mechanisms. All these are traditional way. All of us, we know it. We already have the proper controls over it. This is why criminals like me, we decided to come up with a new innovative ways. Not to launder 100 million. No, 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 this is nothing. It's to launder billion of dollars. This is what we are after. We reinvented the game to do everything legally and you can't ask questions. You say, how we are do gonna do it? Let me tell you about one of the things that we did. I was actually in Russia and the Russian, they told me they would like to launder billion of dollars, not million, billion of dollars. So I told them it's very simple. We took the money from Russia to Moldova and then we opened shell companies in Europe. And we opened shell companies in Moldova. And we make the shell companies in Moldova sign agreements with the shell companies in Europe. In case they violate these terms, they have to pay billion in dollars, a billion of euros, not dollars. Make it euros here. So what will happen after, because they are both shell companies and both we own them, they, we made the Moldovian company violate the terms of European companies. So European company flew over with their lawyers and they went to the court in Moldova and the judge in Moldova, he said that we have in Moldova to pay millions of euros to these companies who are actually in Europe. And with this way, I was able to launder billion of euros from Russia to, uh, to Europe without any question asked. And these are the techniques that these individuals will implement. They are so smart in implementing these techniques. But you think issues like this, 
is only happening in Russia and Moldova. Come on, we are living in the Middle East. There are no billion of dollars are laundered using these techniques. Of course there are, look what happened here. UA exchange staff, they are guilty of $930 million only money laundering only that they were able to actually move. So this is the question. These issues are happening globally. It's not only impacting one part of the world. The amount of money laundering happening all over the world is massive. And this is why regulators, they go after them. Look what happened here just recently, just in October 4, 2020. The UA Central Bank, they make two exchange houses pay fine. One around half million and another around one million. Why? Because they were not following the proper protocols related to money laundering. The issue with the central bank in UAE, they always ask, how can we monitor? How can we ensure that these guys are providing us the proper record? They are not sending any money that's not recorded on the books. This is the big challenge, especially when we have hawala. And you understand what hawala, there are certain countries we can transfer the money to them through the proper financial system. So we need to keep records and books on file. And these uh, you know, areas, they are really target for money launderers, for them to move money around. This is why in UAE, they say they have until December 3rd to make sure that all the hawala in the country is regulated and they are following the proper rules and regulations. And this is a huge opportunity for us as anti-money laundering to ensure that we work with them to ensure they have the proper controls in place. Not only that, they implemented in UAE a very smart anti-money laundering system. See, we can't operate manually where they, they say it's a fauri tick, where we can on the spot verify and confirm the uh, transfers that we are doing and the financial transaction. The central bank in UAE said any check less than 10,000 dirham is actually processed in less than 60 seconds. And this is about the speed. We are operating in a world where the speed of the transaction is a critical for us to survive in the global economy. And without implementing te techniques like this and system to verify on the spot, we can survive in the future. Look at this related to money laundering. Nine jailed and, uh, fine, and, and they paid fine in millions related to 306 million money laundering. Oops. You say 300 million money laundering? How this technique, how they, uh, this happened? Well, the story is very interesting. There was a guy who was selling oil uh, uh, illegally. So he was doing oil trading without license. This is what we call the shadow economy. Someone is operating and selling items less than the market price and he is making profit but this money is coming from illegal activities so what happened how he can channel the money well he had different company different shell companies and different individuals we had where he's shelling channeling the money through the financial sector but one guy in one of the uh, uh, banks noticed that this transaction they are not usual so he started to ask about the source of fund and when the person couldn't actually report and explain the source of fund, they were able to uncover the fraud related to this uh, individuals and the anti-money laundry he's doing. See, so he's doing crime by selling all uh, unlicensed oil, and then after we discover he's also doing money laundry. Look at this, 200 law firms are involved in issues related to not having the proper anti-money laundering controls and the proper uh, uh, questions to ask their clients when they are setting up all their legal structure. This is why you can see recently in UAE, they are really focusing that by the end of 2020, we have the proper controls in place to ensure that inside UAE, we know the ultimate beneficiary owner. And you can see the regulation. They want to know who is the actual owner of this organization. They want to know for all these organizations who are involved in real estate, banking, financial transactions, how they are operating and do they have the proper controls in place. And out of these 200 firms, they say seven law firms, they had to be fined and they shut them down for one month. They took their license because they were actually violating the laws in UAE. And we need to ensure uh, that these organizations are taken down because the only thing that will allow organized crimes uh, and uh, mafia operation like me to operate is to have the proper legal firm telling me about all the gaps in the system helping me in exploding all these weaknesses in the system. So what they decided to do in UAE, and this is only in November 2020, the Ministry of Economy are creating a full department related to anti-money laundering. And their effort is massive. What they are trying to do, they say, today we need to establish a department to do three things. 
Number one, we need to monitor. We need to go and make sure we have the proper way to monitor all these transactions. Number two, we need to enforce the law. We need to make sure all these anti-money laundering regulations and procedures and control are implemented properly. And number three, we need to investigate any issues related to anti-money laundering. This is an amazing effort to ensure that you know, we are living in an economy that's free from corruption, from anti-money laundering, which is an amazing effort by the government. Not only that, in UAE, for us to go after these anti-money laundering uh, criminals, they have set up a uh, you know, new court to hear all the cases related to anti-money laundering to ensure we are going after all these criminals, which is interesting to see. So what we need to do for us as uh, anti-money laundering professionals, as anti-money laundering professionals, we need to change our approach. Our approach where annually we contact customer, we say we would like to know our customer, where we send a questionnaire that they are looking exactly the same like questionnaire last year and we look at them, where we are trying to monitor the transaction that's only unusual. We need to change this approach because today we are living in the digital age. And what we need to do, we need to change what we call know your customer to what we call dynamic um, uh, monitoring, dynamic know your customer, dynamic profiling, the meaning we are doing it 24 hours, not annually, not sometime in, 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 in we are going to try to go and check this customer and verify the transaction if we get a, a, a red flag. We should do all the time monitoring. And why this is possible today and it was not possible 20 years ago? Because today all the transaction is happening in real time. No, there is no anymore someone will go to the uh, branch and fill up a form manually where we need to go look at the information manually. It's all happening through the system. All the processes are automated. But unfortunately, until now, some of your organization, they are still making forms in Word and PDF documents where we can't access them, we can't monitor them. Why we are not automating our process and having a real system? Look what they say. They say it's not only about that, it's also we need to create the proper regulations creating the proper regulations to go after these money laundering uh, 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 cases by having a laws like what now they are going to do in the US, where they are going to give money to the whistleblower, to the person who is going to come and tell us, look at what's going on. Look at this case. And this is exactly what we need. We need to motivate these individuals inside the organization. If they saw something not right, for them to, for them to come and talk, and they know we are going to protect them, and we are going to reward them. Today, we moved to money laundering in the digital age. So what can we do if we are operating in the digital age and we want to do money laundering? The easiest thing is we buy the bank. I don't need my hat anymore. I don't need all this operation anymore. I can now operate in a different kind of environment where I am actually operating in the cloud. I am going and buying that bank and all the transactions are done through me. Is this really what's happening in reality? Look what's happening. They say the amount of transaction are in hundreds of thousands related to all these banks. They are running credit card payment and they are running different kind of wire transfer and they are allowing businesses to accept payment and we don't know the source of all of them. So it's, we are moving in completely different direction. These organizations now, they are in control and they have full access to everything. We are in control as criminal buying the banks. I can buy the bank and launder the whole money in the world. So how can we find them? What is the proper technique for us to find them? This is what we are gonna learn about. We are gonna learn about the, the, the solutions that cross fraud they have, and they implemented all over the world. They monitored millions and billions of transactions to help make sure that we are operating in real time, catching anti-money laundering criminals and helping your organization identify all these unusual transactions. Thank you uh, very much uh, uh, for giving us the opportunity to uh, talk about uh, Emil, your, uh, what I would, your, I would uh, compliment you for your storytelling abilities and getting the AML into a storytelling perspective. You've done a very good uh, job. Uh, my topic uh, I've been asked to speak about is what is happening in the future trends in anti-money laundering applications. You started off very well giving a brief about the other aspects of money laundering, the governance aspect, the FATF 40 recommendations, the risk-based approach, uh, which the FATF has asked all the regulators 
to carry on and which has been percolated down to the banking system where they are supposed to do a risk based assessment not only on customers by product by geography by channels by all sorts of slice and dice methods now uh, you raised a very interesting uh, bit as uh, like you said that we are, we are not living in the past we are living in the present uh, similarly uh, as far as the aml application go uh, and the aml uh, uh, detection goes it's not the same as what it was yes even last year i would give you an example of the covid 19 situation all of you are aware that the covid 19 by itself has raised a lot of aml risk which has been highlighted by the uh, regulatory authorities and the fatf in terms of uh, in especially in terms of uh, the new avenues for money laundering which includes uh, transportation of medicine uh, pay, paying of subsidies down the line which involves small amounts which has led to a new risk such as synthetic identities that is opening fake accounts etc so what do we need to do uh, uh, the uh, the earlier aml applications which were used maybe four years five years ago i would say were all rule based applications but would rules work these days i don't think so yes it may catch some old traditional uh, ways of money laundering which you had which mr motada highlighted earlier but uh, it does it won't catch some of the moldovian type of uh, uh, money laundering that has happened so what are the current trends and what needs to be done you one needs to have an intelligent aml tool intelligent aml tool which can handle big data big data immediately complex big data so what are the type of uh, uh, tools that we would uh, need for money laundering and in what areas would we need for money laundering maybe i will explain about the type of Uh, technology that is currently being employed uh, in addition to the normal rule base we are now uh, using technologies such as data analytics which includes not only big data but deep data uh, and if you get into deep data it is uh, uh, analyzing at the uh, uh, unstructured and structured uh, data including unstructured languages and for that in, in addition to data analytics which will help us identify behavioral topologies we would also be we would also need to use machine learning ai uh, nl natural language ability processing as well as uh, currently for the efficiency of operations you also now be getting into rpa uh, the rpa processes in actually handling your customer onboarding and Uh, looking at uh, uh, media scrolling and doing analysis through using RPA tools, which would help the case worker to actually do a much better job than what he would do. And uh, the fundamental aspects of it is what is the area that we would be looking into in terms of uh, AML. Let's start with uh, customer onboarding uh, processes. screening okay when we could uh, have customer onboarding first of all we need to do screening know your customer and a very good point embraces do i know them just at the time of opening or do i need to know them right through what we i would call continuous monitoring that's dynamic which you, uh, which mr mutaller used the word dynamic monitoring i would also add the word continuous monitoring where a tool should be able to analyze the customer against the original data that has been produced and both static uh, data and the non static transactional data and look at what type of transactions have gone through and carry out a immediate risk assessment for for the enhanced due diligence procedures to take place so in the in addition to the normal screening what we need to have is also social media analytics or using social external media and social media to understand to know much more about your customer for example let's take the uh, uh, ubo how do we identify ubos we go into shell companies we pull out details from your uh, listings and all and you will never know because they may be situated in some uh, place like a mauritius or a singapore and especially if you look at uh, shell companies which are operating i think there are some very key hubs in certain type of industries like your diamond uh, industry uh, and 
uh, where there are cases in pharmaceuticals, drug, bulk drug manufacturing, all that has uh, such type of thing. So you would you could possibly use social media uh, to get to know more about the company. And one other good thing that has happened, which can, which can somebody can pull out from their AML tool, is so the switch uh, by itself has now created a registry of all their users in terms of the background, the customer information portfolio, which we, which you could actually pull out and use as part of your uh, customer uh, onboarding uh, steering. So your tool should be able to do that. Then we need to have pattern and behavioral analysis. Okay, pattern analysis using various uh, uh, pattern uh, recognition technologies. Like I mentioned, you it could be MI, it could be a mix of MI, AI, UI, and uh, and. Uh, NL. So you re actually recognize the patterns that are happening and you actually be able to predict. It's not looking at what has happened in the past, but predict what can happen in the future and raise red flags, which uh, rightfully the previous owner Muthada pointed out. Your tool should be able to do that. And that is going to be uh, uh, one of the trends. The other one is your link analytics, that is high speed link analytics. Link analytics in terms of not only the time of onboarding, it should be link, uh, link customer analytics, linked account analytics, similarity de detection later on. When I say link customer analytics, one needs to show at the time of onboarding whether this customer who's just coming in has a link to other customers so that you can see whether there is anything that could be within your bank, you would have at the same uh, 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 link to the customer or it could be outside the bank. Okay, so the link analytics will throw out your network of all the cross chains A to B, B to C, C to D, then D back to A. Uh, so th this is something and then, sim then subsequently your tool should be able to do similarity detection. That is, if there, if you have found a particular scenario where you have where it, uh, led to a uh, uh, STR being filed and which appeared to be, and uh, either it could be money laundering or it is, could be terrorist financing, etc., you should be able to do that, and that is where uh, where you can actually use that scenario which actually happened to uh, check it against a complete customer database in your transaction database. And especially in the new world, the digital payment world, there is no more face-to-face. -face. It's all digital payments. You have uh, the, the, the digital worlds, you have new payment systems, new methods of transferring money, and your tool should be able to actually carry out your analysis, recognitions. It, it is immediate online. Okay, your tool should be able to pull out not, not only across one channel, but across cross-channels detection. Okay, I may do one, the customer may do something through the branch, which is a physical bit. You could do through mobile banking, you could do through internet banking, you can do uh, quite a bit. And it could also be through your credit cards. And uh, you could open that. I know of a case where 27,000 uh, synthetic uh, identities were opened by a merchant uh, uh, bank. And this 27,000, uh, this thing was used to launder money. So there are, there are quite a bit and you can get information to the dark web and my details of the customer, of a customer can be sold for what, maybe a dollar, two dollars, you can get details of Ashok Rao and Murtaza on the, on, on the web and make use of it to uh, spot the uh, uh, money. So fundamentally, I think whilst all this is what a tool that's a coming trends in AML tools or the AML product is there should also be i also see a convergence in aml and fraud detection technology because there's a thin line between aml and fraud and this convergence of the aml and fraud detection capability would also help increase operational synergies and operational efficiencies so i see that happening in addition to that what i see in the uh, near future and in fact one of the banks uh, where it happened uh, actually went in and were fined quite severely it's a good bank. It's a worldwide, uh, highly reputed bank. Okay, they've they've implemented something called behavioral uh, sciences in their compliance department. They have used behavioral biometrics and behavioral sciences as a part of behavior analysis. Like there are two types of behaviors. One is intuitive behavior. The other is slow, calculated 
detective behavior. And most people think uh, that the second type, but actually it's the first type. So intuitive behavior is, it's your brain thinking that it knows, it knows everything. And you tend to miss out knowledge, but it's trying to nudge people to, to the second level, which would actually help in reducing KYC customer onboarding risk. Okay, and I would see this coming into the tool. Ultimately, uh, we will see quite a bit of what was being done manually, whether it is behavioral uh, biometrics or others coming into the tool. And I would also see, uh, this is something that I think was going to happen, like, uh, nowadays, uh, uh, if you look at uh, the US task force on money laundering, and I think it is the EU, uh, the banks have got together, and the UK, in fact, and even in the UK, have got together to pro provide information about their alerts and get it into a single system so that all the bank knows what happens. So instead of uh, each bank becomes a, actually a, a subset of the total. And from the total, you can actually see the links that are happening across banks where early, originally you did not have control. So you could actually get an alert race and predict at that level what could go wrong and pass on the information. So whilst it could be currently e e uh, the UK and EU, I would later on see the, all the AML systems of banks talking to one another. You uh, know, it is uh, well, uh, each bank becomes a branch of a big bank, like a country. The whole of India could be one bank. You have the FIU, yes, but the whole of India could be one bank with all the ML systems talking to uh, uh, one another and processing data because big data means processing data at high speed. Okay, and uh, but the deep data is diving into data which is structured and unstructured. I see all this happening. So your tool should be able to carry.